Welcome to the Spine Guy. I'm Dr. Brian Sue, a fellowship trained spine surgeon in Marin, California. The Spine Guy is a channel dedicated to making the complex spine simple for patients to understand. Today we'll be talking about surgical treatment for lumbar spinal stenosis. I'll be posting new videos frequently, so hit the subscribe button to catch them as they come out. Lumbar spinal stenosis is just narrowing of the nerves in the low back, which causes buttock and leg pain. As a reminder, this is what lumbar spinal stenosis looks like. There's a normal spine with an open space for the nerves, and here's a compressed spine where there's hourglassing and a little bone spur that's pinching the nerve. Compression can be at multiple levels, and you see here there's multiple levels where there's hourglassing of the space for the nerves, and here again just a single level which is the same image I showed you before. Surgical treatment for lumbar spinal stenosis has been around for 50 years. It's one of the oldest surgeries that we have. We've made a ton of advancements in making this surgery a lot more minimally invasive, the recovery a lot quicker, but the fundamentals of treating lumbar spinal stenosis is really quite simple, and that is removing the bone spur off of the nerve and taking pressure off of the nerve. That really simply means making an incision in the low back and taking this bone spur off of the nerve when it has to do a single level compression, and with multiple level compression, it involves taking the pressure off of multiple levels. When there's single level compression, the surgery is something called a micro decompression. This is done quite minimally invasively. The surgery involves making an incision over the back. And let's say we are doing L4, L5. The bone spur is coming off of this facet joint, which is this joint, and it's hitting the nerve. So what we do is very simply make a little window with small instruments at this area and take the bone spur off of the nerve. I've drawn this on this model here, and this shows if this is the L5 bone and the S1 bone, this will be an L5 S1 micro decompression. It involves making an incision in the back and going in either with a small retractor or with a tube, taking a small instrument such as a three millimeter burr and baby little bone punches to come in and take the pressure off the nerve. A single level decompression is done through a small incision less than an inch long. It's done as an outpatient, meaning you go home the same day, and it usually takes about 45 minutes. A micro decompression is essentially the smallest surgery that you can have in spine surgery. Okay, here we are doing a micro decompression, and some of the instruments that we use, some of these are little baby suctions here that we use. These are called kerosene punches. And this is what we use to go underneath and then punch and then remove the bone spur and then some of that ligament that's pushing on the nerve. And we have these little baby curettes that we use as well to kind of get underneath and curette the spur off the nerve. And we have these little nerve hooks also that we use. And these are all kind of microscopic instruments. Last but not least, here's the kind of workhorse, which is a burr. It's a three millimeter burr. It's very, very small. And you can see it spins. There's a pedal here. And it spins at a very high rate, almost like a dental burr. And it's got a smooth end so that when we push down, it doesn't actually cut. It only cuts from the side. So those are the main instruments we use for a micro decompression. Do we need more surgery? In the setting of multi-level compression, where you have to decompress three, four, five levels of the spine, which certainly can't happen, the surgery is called a laminectomy. The word ectomy, E-C-T-O-M-Y, means to remove. Lamina is this structure right here. So these are what are called the spinous processes, and these are what we call vestigial structures, meaning you're born with them, but you don't really need them. And this is the actual lamina. The lamina is the covering of the spine. So what a laminectomy is, is removing the lamina off of the spine. I'll draw here a laminectomy. And if we were to look at an L3, L4, L5 laminectomy, what we would do is use a very small instrument to remove where these black lines are. And this entire lamina, where I've shaded in, 
gets removed and the nerves on the end side get freedom. Many patients say, is it okay to remove all of this bone and leave the spinal canal exposed? And in fact, it is. In patients that get this surgery and have the nerves decompressed in the back from a laminectomy can play full competitive sports after they're healed. So as you can see, the surgery for lumbar spinal stenosis can range anywhere from a single level micro decompression. Sometimes we can actually decompress the right and left side through a single little opening. And sometimes we do what's called a partial laminectomy, which is instead of removing the entire lamina, we can remove parts of the lamina, which is also a little bit more minimally invasive. You'll have to speak to your surgeon about what they think is the right type of decompression for you. Again, ranging anywhere from a micro decompression to a partial laminectomy to a full laminectomy. These are all reasonable options for lumbar spinal stenosis. A unilateral laminotomy bilateral decompression is a unique way to take pressure off of the nerves on both sides, but from one side. It's a little bit of a more minimally invasive approach. Um, and essentially we approach the spine from one side, we have an opening here to access the spine and then we use the burr and we cut across towards the other side without disrupting the other structures and thereby removing pressure off of the nerve on both sides from one side. This can actually be quite useful um, when there is instability or something else in the spine where you're really trying to preserve uh, a lot of the architecture of the spine. All of these surgeries have about a 90 to 95 percent chance of taking away buttock and leg pain. Surgery for lumbar spinal stenosis is better for treating buttock and leg pain than back pain, and that's because the buttock and leg pain is coming from the pinched nerve, whereas back pain can be coming from arthritis or anything else. How much pain we take away depends on how badly the nerves have already been damaged. Typically, I tell patients we can take away at least half of their pain. The micro decompression surgery takes about 45 minutes. It's an outpatient procedure. It's done through a small incision, a laminectomy, what is done at multiple levels obviously has to be done through a much larger incision that needs to cover the levels that have to be decompressed. A laminectomy procedure that's even multi-level, three, four, five levels, usually only takes about an hour and an hour and a half. The multi-level laminectomy procedures usually requires an overnight stay in the hospital, sometimes a two-day stay, but typically for my patients, usually just a one-night stay. The first couple of days are painful with either surgery because of the incision in the back. So the soft tissues have to heal, the muscles have to heal together. So for the first day or so, patients are usually more in bed than out, but obviously up and around and walking. Usually most of the back pain dissipates by five to seven days. At five to seven days, patients are walking into my office unassisted for a wound check with my nurse. At six weeks, almost all patients are walking one to two miles in total during a day. Physical therapy usually starts at eight weeks, and I let patients back to the gym in full activity at around three to four months. That timeline obviously varies depending on how small or large the decompression is, and you have to talk to your physician about what they are comfortable with. Almost all patients wear a lumbar corset, which is a soft brace for six weeks just for comfort. The risks of surgery are pretty straightforward. The first risk is because we're working around nerves, there is a chance of nerve injury that can lead to increasing weakness or pain. That's exceedingly unusual because we are using a neurological monitoring person in the room who's actually watching your nerves, seeing what's happening with the nerves while we're doing surgery. The chance of a neurological injury is about one in a thousand. The second risk is a dural tear. That's probably the biggest risk of surgery. The nerves swim in fluid and that fluid's covered by a thin sac. If the bone spur is severe and it's scarred onto the sac, as we remove the spur, the sac could tear. If the sac tears, it's not a big deal. Spinal fluid leaks out. We repair the tear, lay you flat for a day or two. It delays your recovery. It does not change the ultimate outcome of surgery. The chance of a dural tear in a lumbar laminectomy or a micro decompression procedure is about three to five percent. Again, it doesn't affect the long-term outcome of surgery. After surgery, there's a chance of infection, which is less than 1%. And the biggest risk after surgery is we are not doing a fusion. We're not putting rods, screws, bone graft in. Anything can happen at those levels. We are simply taking the pressure off of the nerve. You can develop fractures around that area. You can develop instability, which is abnormal motion in the bone. You can develop disc herniations. A small percent of patients, less than 5%, even develop recurrent stenosis 
meaning more bones grow, so they cause compression at the same area. That's actually pretty unusual, but the point being, we're not permanently fixing that level of spine because we're not doing a fusion. Typically, we do not recommend a fusion for lumbar spinal stenosis unless there's instability, which is called spondylolisthesis. That's a whole nother episode, which we will do on lumbar spondylolisthesis. But for straightforward lumbar spinal stenosis, which is a pinched nerve, a fusion is almost never indicated. There are specific indications for doing a fusion in the setting of stenosis, for example, if the nerve is being pinched in the area that we cannot reach, meaning if a nerve is being pinched way out here underneath the joint and we have to remove the whole joint to get to it, obviously by removing the joint, we destabilize the spine, then we'd have to do a fusion. Sometimes there's scoliosis that's involved. It becomes extremely, it becomes extremely complicated, but I would say that for the majority of patients with lumbar spinal stenosis, we are not doing fusions. Lumbar spinal stenosis has some of the best outcomes in spinal surgery, again, with a 90 to 95% success rate with a fairly quick recovery. Weakness that is associated with lumbar spinal stenosis may or may not get better, although pain usually does get better. I would say 50% of patients do get some recovery in strength. There is some data that also suggests that if you've had weakness for longer than six months, you tend to not do as well than if you have weakness for shorter, to, shorter than six months because we were able to get to the compression earlier. Numbness, like you can't quite feel it, like you have a giant sock on, also doesn't get better. Pins, needles, and pain gets better, but numbness is a quality of nerves that, for reasons we don't know, sometimes just doesn't get better after surgery. Otherwise, lumbar spinal stenosis surgery is a great operation with terrific outcomes, and if you are having more than six months of pain, weakness, numbness, difficulty walking, surgery would be an outstanding option for you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click the like button and leave questions or feedback in the comment box below. Feel free to let me know what videos you'd like to see in the future.